lot of the time we, uh, when we're painting, we neglect a really important relationship, and that is our relationship with our paintbrushes. What we're going to do is we're going to look at some very simple exercises that will develop more of a, an understanding um, of how your paintbrushes work. A little concept I'm going to um, suggest to you is that, and we'll take about take away you know the shape of the paintbrush and all of those things, but we'll just look at a particular paintbrush. And there are three major principles that affect the marks that a paintbrush makes. So for example, um, one of the things that affects a paintbrush or the marks that a paintbrush makes is how much paint you've got on your brush, obviously. If you've got a tiny little bit, um, it obviously doesn't cover as well. Um, you've got a lot, obviously it's gonna make a different mark. Another thing is the amount of pressure that you apply. So you might have a similar amount of paint, but you push really hard, pushes the paint into the surface, changes the mark. Or if you do it very, very delicately over the top, again, it will change the mark. And then the last thing is the quality of the paint. So for example, I use a Atelier Free Flow, and it's a very easy, free-flowing kind of paint. So if I use that, a brush full of that, it leaves an entirely different mark than say Atelier Interactive or one of the other heavy bodied acrylics. Um, that said though, um, while you're working with whatever paint it is, you can alter the quality of the paint. By quality I mean the behaviour or the performance of the paint by adding mediums. So <clears throat> we have the amount of paint on your brush, the amount of pressure that you apply and the consistency or the quality of the paint. And those three things will translate to almost every single paintbrush. What I'm suggesting a lot of the times though is that as artists we go into a paint shop and we buy a paintbrush because we think it will solve all of our problems, including relationships and financial problems. <laughs> There's an old saying with fishermen, for example, more lures catch fishermen than they ever catch fish. And paintbrushes could be the same. What I consider that you do is to understand the mechanics of a paintbrush or the mechanics of mark making so that when you go and buy a paintbrush you're buying a paintbrush that will do a specific job or that you're educated about the job that you want that paintbrush to make. Um, after you've been playing with your paintbrushes for a long time you'll pick up a, br a brush and very very quickly just by touching it and looking at it have a pretty good idea of what sort of mark it's going to make. Um, and that just comes from understanding the dynamics of your paintbrush. So we've all seen the Olympics and we've all seen those elite athletes and they, you know, tear off and just win gold medals with no preparation at all, just decide to go in the Olympics. Um, I'm being facetious, of course, but you realize that how much time those people spend, you know, swimmers, for example, will spend thousands of hours practicing the turn at the end. But as painters, we don't do that. We decide that our next painting will be our gold medal winning performance. <laughs> and we do no training. So I'm just going to suggest that next time before you leap in and do your painting, and you can do this as a warm up if you like, just take one paintbrush and a blank canvas and just see how many different marks you can make with that one paintbrush. Just by altering the amount of pressure, the amount of uh, paint in the brush, um, the viscosity or the quality of the paint and and then start changing the way that you make brush strokes and changing the way that you um, make your marks and hold your your brush you'll be surprised actually when you start doing that you'll realize eventually that some of the old ones that you've got in a box out the back which are pretty much unusable will be perfect for something so you'll find that those old brushes that you've been saving will come in handy again but it only comes from you understanding deeply the marks that the brushes make. So take some time, sit down, one color, no pressure. And if you're stuck for inspiration, go and find trees or you know things in the bush and, and just make silhouettes of the shapes of them. And you'll be surprised at how quickly that will train you to be comfortable and confident with your paintbrush. Okay, so I'm just going to make a whole pile of marks here. Just playing around and just see.
you know, what little stories I can tell just by playing with one colour. Just varying the amount of pressure on the brush and how I hold it. And you can see that, you know, I haven't done much except load the brush up occasionally. And you can see sort of the beginnings of things that I've done in paintings before. <laughs> so this kind of library of shapes. But when you understand what your brushes will do, it's not such a leap to start turning them into pictures. I've taken a lot of paint out of the brush and now I've got Spinifex grass on the sand dunes. Turn the brush on its edge. And we have a post in the sand, another post in the sand, but the sand's got footprints in it. And undulates as it goes over the sand dunes. So you can see, I'm just messing around, you know, just kind of and seeing what marks I can make. And while this is just kind of fun and frivolous, it's, it's developing that relationship I was telling you about with your paintbrush. So you kind of have an understanding of the marks that you want to make before you even make them. Like that, some shrubs underneath there. Again, as I say, it's fun, it's frivolous, but it's developing that intimate relationship with your paintbrush. Let's face it, you're going to spend a lot of time with one of these in your hand. You may as well know it really well. <laughs>